Okay, today we're on the last day talking about the five dangers of offense. So the fifth danger is that it separates us from God. And I hope that even as we've looked at different things this week, I hope that you're finding yourself walking right past offenses. And if offense comes to you, I hope you're letting it go and that you're finding your mind is shifting and that you're not having a mindset that's easy to be offended. Because you know what? This is the most important danger. We don't want to ever be separated from God. And offense is just like unforgiveness, and that's sin. And sin separates us from God. We cannot be in the presence of a holy God and hold on to our sin. You know, even in the New Testament, it talks about if you come to the altar and you want to give your gift to me, and then you remember you have unforgiveness or offense in your heart towards your brother, leave your gift, go back to your brother and make things right. That's how important it is to God that we don't hold on to offense and unforgiveness. So we can't control all the offenses that come and we can't control how they come or when they come or who they come by. But you know what? We can control how we respond. So how are we going to respond? First Peter 4, 8 says, love covers a multitude of sins. A multitude of offenses. Okay, Peter is so famous for asking Jesus that very all-time favorite important question. How many times do we have to forgive? And of course he's thinking, you know, one time, two times, three times. So he's trying to, you know, be even better than that. He's like, seven times? And Jesus says what? Not just seven, but 70 times seven. Wow, that's a lot of times to forgive. And I hope you don't have to forgive that many times every day, the same person, the same offense. But you know what? Jesus is saying that that love in our heart, it covers a multitude. And 70 times 7, that's a multitude. So, But we know that love, that God's love that we have, that can cover those offenses. Ephesians 1, 7 talks about God and how he has forgiven our sins, our offenses, by his grace. It's not that we deserved it. It's not that we did something great to earn it. We're just like that servant. We didn't deserve to get forgiven, but he forgave us because that's how amazing our God is. So bringing all this offense to the, to the maximum climax, the number one verse that I feel like we have to hold on to Psalms 119, 165, and it says, great peace. I could just stop right there. Great peace. You know, if someone's telling me that they can give me great peace, I'm pretty willing to do anything for that great peace. So God's giving us the secret, and he says, great peace are the, to those who love my law or love his word. Great peace to them, and nothing by any means will offend them. Praise God. So he's saying the more we love his word, the more we become like him and the more things cannot offend us. So if you find yourself easily offended, you need to check two things. How is your love and how is your word? If you're not spending time in God's word, you're going to be easily offended. If you're not spending time with your heart to the heart of our father, you don't know his love. And without his love, you have nothing to cover a multitude of sins. So, more word, more love. Abraham Lincoln, who was my very favorite president, he said, we should be too big to take offense and too noble, or I'm going to say also too Christ-like, to give it. So, we don't want to take offense. We don't want to give offense. So, going the second mile, what are we going to do? We are going to choose to love like our Father, because what? That love covers a multitude of sins. And we are going to dive into the Word of God, because when we dive into God's Word, we will have great, great peace. And with that peace, nothing by any means will offend us.